uh, on the replay. You might want to fast forward maybe about a half an hour or so because I'm going to show some goodies I got from the virtual craft vendors market and a project that I kind of finished up before we get started on creating our character. So I know a lot of times folks um, come into maybe a video and think, oh my gosh, when is she going to get started? When is she going to get started? So if you just fast forward, that would probably alleviate some anxiousness that you might incur. I've decided to change my channel name. I really don't know how to go about it. Some of you may have noticed I changed my banner and I'm calling my channel now Bricolage with Pink Girly, which means creating with a diverse um, variety of things, which kind of, you know, for me, I like to paint, I like to draw, I like to color, I like to work with paper. So I thought that kind of fit. So we're going to see how that goes. So you'll have to let me know if you like my new banner. I finally figured it out, got it sized right. I think it looks kind of cute. Good morning, Kathleen. So I was um, planning to do my nails in different colors. Super Bowl Sunday, kids. And I was thinking about, I was talking to Calico Kate last night. And she's a Chiefs fan. I'm an Eagles fan. And I was thinking about doing one hand Eagles and one hand Chiefs. But I got to tell you, I was in the market last night. I was tired. I didn't feel like rummaging through my little nail pieces. So I put on just a French set. But I did do a thumb for the Eagles. So I have to say, go Eagles. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to start off. Mini Hobby Kelly. Hello, Kelly. It's nice to see you. Kelly, if we met, I'm not sure if we have, if we haven't. Good morning. It's nice to have you here. The Virtual Craft Vendors Market. Hey, good morning, Janet. If you're not uh, familiar with that, it, um, hey, Hottie Popo. Good morning. Nice to see you. If you're not familiar with the Craft Vendors Market, Keisha's Creations is the YouTube channel. And she just um, sells for a lot of different vendors. There's a lot of variety in what she offers. And I got my package from last month, um, just a few days ago. I did, of course, as you see, opened it, but I didn't rummage it through everything. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I just want to show you what I what I decided to purchase. And I just got to say, good morning, Kathy. Hey, Gail. Good morning. I, um, I, I, I don't know. I just, I like to watch the markets because you get a lot of different ideas. You see a lot of products that maybe you don't normally see. But the thing for me with Keisha is she packages very well. And then yeah, she sells a lot of stuff, guys. And then you get this extra, this extra little, this is all hand done stitch. She stitched this. She added a little napkin. She added a pin and a charm and a bead. It's not blank on the back. She created a, I don't know how she does all this stuff. But look at this cute little napkin with all those little rose images, right? And then I, there's a wooden heart that came in this package too. Here. A little thank you. I, I, I just blows my mind. I'm retired. I couldn't do it all. Good morning, Beth. Who did I miss? There's Melody. Hi, Melody. So let's see. Let me put this aside. I got this little um, package of papers that I thought looked cute. I love vintage stuff. I love old paper. Oh, I was sitting up late last night and I ordered a magazine off of eBay. It's coming from France. 1923, I think it is. The images look phenomenal. Oh, okay. So look, these are, I'm sure these are reprinted. But see, these will be great for collage and they're a great size, right? Look at that nice old car. So this was what came in this little goodie package. 
Make sure I don't miss anybody. As you're all popping on in. And look, a little variety of papers that go with this. It's kind of a craft color. You can probably see that. So that'll be a nice addition to a collage page, huh? <laughs> yeah. Look, I've got beads running wild. I've um, been loving orange lately. My favorite color is green. My next is purple. And now I also really am liking orange. So I've got these cute little wooden beads, which I think they might look cute, added to a tassel. I gotta be honest, guys. I got this little thing. I I have no memory of ordering this. So I don't know if I'm sleep shopping or if I thought my granddaughter would like this. But it's a little gingerbread bracelet. I could adjust that for Charlotte. She might get a kick out of that. So I got that little guy. And look at this. This is a um a die cut. I haven't tried it yet, but I think it would be cool to add behind. Actually, this would have been cool for today's project. I should have tried to cut one of those out, but that'll have to wait. That will have to wait. These are, as many of you probably know, I'm a button freak. Hey, Raul, good morning couple more days left for Raul in, in Paris. These are Lucite buttons. I don't know. They've got like a little triangle kind of embedded in there. And they're real smooth. Oh, love them. Love them. And then, oh yeah, this bling. I got this bling. It's not always easy for me to get in. My lag is a bit contrary. But I got in and I got this bling. I love to add stuff like this on the front of journals. So, I mean, I don't know. But, huh? I think if I put that it's in maybe some um, jewelry cleaner, I could even get that to shine up a little bit more. Be a little more sparkly. I do love my sparkly. El bling bling. All right, and then these, these are more buttons. I think a lot of what I have, like I've said before, really not worth anything, but yeah, pretty bling, right, Kelly? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't really even know what's in here, let's see. So I've got two of these. That almost looks like glass in there. And these, they're not, they're, I, they might be some kind of plastic. I don't know. That's a little bunch of grapes. Look at that one. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Can you see that little, when I hold it that way, can you see that little square in the little circle? I know. Look at the fish. That's probably what caught my eye when uh, Keisha was showing it. I think he's glass. He looks like he might be glass. But see, adding these kinds of things to uh, a journal cover, I love it. That's if you can bring yourself to use it, which is something, you know, I struggle with. And then when she started showing different beads and different jewelry, I don't know. It really looks like glass. I'll have to get my magnifying glass out and really look at it. But you know how like that old milk glass would look on the bottom? It kind of has that rough feeling. So I think this might have been the first piece of jewelry I got that one night I was shopping. And I thought these beads were kind of cool. Oh, I forgot to um, turn off my little notifications down there. And then it's got all kinds of little, you know, the little feet in the sand. It's got the little fish, a shell. So my idea was to take it apart and create another 
bracelet. And then she showed these. Look at these. I thought, oh, they might go with those other blue beads. And in my mind, I'm building a bracelet, right? Now, I don't know if these are what they call lamp work. But they have little flowers on them. There's little seed beads in here. And then these beautiful... Now, I'm really not a blue person, but for, for whatever reason, the blue was really speaking to me that night that I was shopping. So then along comes the next group of jewelry. And there was a necklace with a lot of blue beads. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get that. These other little beads will add to the bracelet and these this necklace the beads on the necklace will just fill out the rest of the bracelets not lamp work it's real bumpy gail they're real bumpy you know like you can feel the texture on the outside So then I got this necklace. Where do you get a load of this? I am, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just being honest, okay? I almost wet my pants when I brush this out of the bag. Because on screen, on screen, it didn't look, look how stinking big they are. Look how big they are. Kel says, right, the flowers were added to a piece of glass, I think. Okay. Now they, do they call that something? That um, style of, of making beads something special? Or All right. So some of these smaller ones down here I might be able to work with. I know, right, kids? Look it. Whoa is right. They're freaking huge. But. They could be, they could be, you know, the bottom of a, um, of a, of a tassel or a, like a bead tassel. I, I'll find some way to use them or, or they'll go to Goodwill. It doesn't matter. The price was, you know, not much, but I think these little blue beads might work with my other collection. And somewhere I have in my art studio, I have, um, that memory wire. So you just you just string it on the wire, wrap it around your, you can make as many loops as you want. So I'm gonna oh well, I don't want to use this little bead. Look, there's a little seed bead trying to trying to escape. So I'm gonna see what I can work up with that. Now one of my former lives, I was uh who was I? Oh, I want to show you this. This is vintage. Um Oh gosh, what do they call it? Uh, border or paper border? And I saw this and they looked kind of old timey. So I really like these. Let me show you these real quick. I haven't looked at these yet. I can get the little, the little bags are fiddly sometimes. Well, welcome to everyone who's come in. I see there's a few more that have arrived. And as I said earlier on, if you're a replayer, please scoot forward about a half an hour or so. Look. Look, aren't they darling? They look so retro to me. I love these. And they have a little bit of, you know, glitter on them. I don't mind the glitter. I think I had one of these before, but I'm not sure mine had the glitter. Ooh, look at this. I love Christmas bells. Sweet. I'm going to enjoy those for sure. All right. All right. So then... As I was saying, in one of my former streams, I was doing a form of binding. So I should have re-looked at my stream because now I can't remember the gal's name. Where she, oh goodness me, 
where she took, she was using just um, flashcards, I think. And she, oh, look, I still got this pinned together. I had to re-glue a little bit. Cut strips of paper, scored them, folded them around all of her. She glued her two little sections on, and then she glued her pages back to back to make a binding. Does anybody, Gail, do you remember the name of the gal that I was inspired by? Look, see, this here I need to re-glue. Hey, April. Nice to see you. Good morning. Anyway. Towards the end of that, that stream, I had said, oh, I wonder if you could use the same idea with maybe paper and fabric. And I had pulled out some of my batik fabric that were cut in strips and started to attach it. Sorry, no, not thinking too well this morning. That's okay. Oh, too much pain in your head. Oh, I hope you could take something for that, Gail. It, you know, I can look back and put it in the I probably won't remember folks anyway you can go back I I don't I don't even remember what day it was it might come to me a little later she has an ex oh I just got it it just popped in Nuit arts you're taking lots of stuff <laughs> well I hope you get some relief Gail Nuit art and so then uh what I did is the on my stream, I was picking out fabric and I found a, a stack of uh, painting papers. And uh, so what I did. Yeah, this was. Uh, a, and then she covered hers with um, nice hard covers that she created. But, you know, this one just it was a play around to see how it worked. And uh, I like how it went together. So then what I did was I stitched my fabric onto my found. Um, thank you, Beth. Yes, Nuit Art. And I decided to stitch my pages together rather than glue them. So what Nuit does is she takes a strip of paper. So I took a strip of fabric and I laid down my painty papers and stitch those on and then instead of gluing them together like see these two pages are glued together I stitched mine together and then it was um because I didn't want to put the hard cover on it because I like seeing the back fabrics um, and it was just a little wobbly. Well, it's still a little wobbly, but I wanted it to lay flat when I go to work on it or work in it. So I put these strips around the back. I didn't glue them here. I just glued them on the front and back. I was able to get two pages that kind of matched to be my front and back. Now, I started out to stitch the two together here and then all the way around the edge of the, the pages. But as it got bigger, it got a little more fiddly to do. And so I thought, well, why do I have to, to stitch here? I'll just stitch around the outside edge. So then I did that. And when I did that, it kind of created a pocket back here, which was fine. But then it made it even more wobbly. So I thought, well, I'll just glue those. So when I opened them up and glued, what I didn't think about is that it's it seeped through. So some of my pages stuck together a little bit. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy just popped in Nuit's um, channel. So after that, I again started to stitch them all together. And then I came back through and add pieces of fabric. You can see that I added pieces of fabric to each page that I used for the spines. So I'm real pleased with it. The pages are very flexible. Like I said, I haven't decided how I'm going to use it, but at least it's ready to be used. It's ready to go. So there you have that. All right. Cool beans, right? 
So I was trying to decide what to do this morning and I couldn't really, and I've been looking at my, at this uh, book that I had per I think I got this a Tuesday morning. I don't really remember. Thank you, Gail. They looked better the second time I looked <laughs> when I pulled them out and started to um, put them together with the fabric. They looked a little better than I. Oh, thank you, Janice. And good morning, Janice. They looked a little better than what I had remembered. So this is called Imaginary Characters, as you can see, by Karen O'Brien. And I've tried and drawn some of these types of uh, images. A couple, I think I've done a couple in um, a couple of my journals. I didn't dig those out. I didn't go look for them. But I absolutely love her faces. And uh, is anybody familiar with her? I did little faces like this. Oh, my gosh. Do I still have my? Yeah, here. Uh. This guy was inspired by Karen, where I just painted on, gosh, I don't even remember, some kind of paper. And then stitched, you know, made the bear and then stitched it on the bear, inspired by Karen O'Brien. So she's got all kinds of things in here, all kinds of projects, things to do. And I don't want to spend a lot of time going through this because what I decided to do today, I don't know how it's going to how it's going to go. You do, April? April said she has a yellow doll that I made that's like that. Oh, I hope you enjoy it. Oh, thanks for telling me that. I don't remember who. It was funny. One of the one of my lives, Anastasia came in and she said, I was just using a peacock I got from you. And I couldn't remember during the live. And then after the live, I remembered, oh, yeah, it was um, like race paper images that I had that I was selling at the market at the time. And I think that's what Anastasia was talking about. So you can see this gal's stuff. If you like this kind of I don't know, funky, imaginary uh, kind of look. It's a it's a marvelous book. So I was I was poking through and I came to Urban Folk. You like the little doggy painting? There's not too many I don't like. I got I to gotta be honest with you. <laughs> oh, little doggy. We all want you. I flipped through pretty quick, didn't I? That's not a dog. Man, Gail, you got good eyes. Oh, this one? This one? That might be it. Brenda says she has one that is a boy that is a bee. A different book. Hey, good morning, Joni. Ah. Oh. Who loves my nails? Thank you, Boo. There's Barbara. Good morning, Barbara. It's a puppy. Jenna says it's a puppy. Oh, this one. Look, he's got little boy legs. So she gives you instructions and walks you through. And so this is what I'm going to attempt to do today. Now, this could be an epic fail. Okay. But. I saw it. I want to try. I wanted to try it. And I thought, oh, well, let's try it together. So I'm going to see if maybe I said, I've got stuff sitting out here. I wasn't sure I had everything that she put on her list to gather. But she says to use um, hot press watercolor paper, which I want to do this in one of my journal, one of my art journal books. 
and the paper is very nice but I don't I don't know that I don't think it's hot press but I'm going to go with it anyway okay acrylic waterproof ink black and two to three colors that work well together I'm going to use my echo line inks uh, Anna I don't know how to say this Anna Gol Galipta wallpaper border I have no idea where I have my wallpaper it's called imaginary characters mixed media painting techniques for figures and faces by Karen O'Brien I don't know I can give you the ISBN if you like let me get my little magnifier oh geez there's two why would there be two? ISBN 13 978 1 4403 4025 3. Yeah. Yeah. I personally do like the hot press better, but I like to draw and uh, I, I don't like a bumpy surface mostly. But, um, I figured my, my book will be, I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm working in in a minute. Then it says to use some colored pencils. Yeah. Hot press is smoother. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You got it. You got it, Brenda. Um, colored pencil, black and white fluid matte medium, which I don't really have. Gail, you like the hot press too? Yeah. Uh, heavy body acrylic paint, titanium white and black. Now I have this, and this is heavier than uh, my regular white paint, but I don't have it in black. So I've just got my regular black acrylic paint out. Uh, marking tools, a permanent marking pen, acrylic paint pen, bamboo skewer, an old magazine page, plastic card or scraper, scissors, a small round detail brush, soft or regular gel medium you're welcome kelly a stencil watercolor pencil black and white tissue paper so the first thing she says to do is to collage the background randomly tear pieces of textured wallpaper tissue paper textured paper with soft gel medium it's difficult to paint over heavy texture, so avoid areas where the critical face parts, such as the eyes, nose, and mouth, might be located. So, I wanted to get that part done. Now, I'm probably going to use my heat gun quite a bit this morning. This is my, uh, pretty, I'm pretty sure this is, oh gosh, I don't even remember. I don't think it's uh, a delusion art book, but I just have a piece of acetate here I'm going to use to protect my pages. So I've done a couple of other things in here. Did this Christmas one? It's taken it's taken the uh, any medium I've given it so far pretty well. I think I had this is a fairly new book. And that was a Halloween thing. And then a Santa. See, that was December 22. I drew a pair of eyes, which aren't finished. You think it's delusions? Might be. I have another one, but the other one might be Ranger. I just have a sketch. So I decided today I'm going to work here. So I don't know where my... Um, wallpaper is I'm not even sure that I have textured wallpaper so I thought well what about a, a, um, a doily so I went rooting through my doilies and I found a placemat I wanted something more square than round so I tore this paper placemat apart and I put it put it down used the gel matte medium I crunched up some tissue paper. This is mostly all just um, the doily. Okay. Jelly prints would be fun too. Uh, yes. So now she says, this is where we're going to get started. 
Now, step two, she says, add vintage paper. Select a piece of vintage magazine paper. I, I got a book. I didn't get a magazine. And apply a thin, even coat of gel medium to the side you want to transfer. So this may not work because I just have a book page. Uh, place the paper face down and burnish it with a damp rag, being careful not to get medium on the top surface. Hey, Dixie Doodle, how are you? She says matte medium. Wait a minute or two and begin to remove the paper. Leave some paper on in places. This will give you the imperfect torn look. If the paper is stubborn, gently rub the surface in a circular motion with damp fingers to remove the residual paper. So I've seen Aunt Beck do this and some other folks online, folks I don't know, but I know Aunt Beck. So I've seen her do it, but um, we're going to give it a go. All right. I'm going to try to follow this step by step, step by step. Okay, so let's get some of this other stuff out of the way. So I just grabbed some. This is an old Agatha Christie. Old Agatha. So I am going to put some in different places. Now, when I looked at Karen's picture, it looked like way underneath she had some around the face. And, um, you know, I'm thinking my face might go here. So. I'm going to just start putting some of this out where I think I might want it. Now, if you're speaking to me and have a question, if you could please, please, please put it in caps. I'm more likely to catch it. Do not feel funny about repeating yourself because I am um, doing this on the fly. Okay. And I'm not sure how it's going to go. I'm, it may be horrible. I don't know. But all that to say, if I don't see your question, put it in again, please. And a few of my mods are here. And if they can answer you, they certainly will. But it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just that I'm trying to concentrate on doing something. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So. It said to put your soft gel medium on the side you want to transfer. And then to burnish it, oops, burnish it down. With a damp cloth. Ooh, leave it sit a few minutes. I guess you're supposed to leave it sit a few minutes before you burnish it. All right, so we got that piece down. I'm going to put another piece over here. Prentice says, I work with kindergartners after school care. I am constantly repeating myself. <laughs> Good. Well, they say you got to repeat yourself at least three times for someone to you know, get the message. At least that's what the pastors do. Now, maybe I'll tear this one, tear this one a little bit. I don't think I really have any vintage, um, her old magazines that I'm at this point ready to rip up like this. So I'm hoping this will work. And then I was thinking I might, I might like to put out, I got a couple of things of um, tea bag, a little tea bag. I think I might put down a little tea bag while I'm doing this. That's going sideways, and that's okay with me. I intentionally did that. 
So now, of course, you're supposed to let this stuff dry, you know, it takes a couple of hours, but I have the heat gun. So that's that's what I'm thinking I want to do. Thinking I want to do the heat gun. Because I th there's no other way for me to do this live, right? Um, you know, unless we're here for like a marathon. And I can't have a marathon on Super Bowl Sunday. I just can't. I just can't. So now who, I'm sure some of you, who in chat has um, put down paper, magazine, or book, print, and uh, then rubbed it off? Beth? Beth probably has done it. Beth does a lot of stuff. All right, now see, I'm the kind of person who I have to read it several times to get it, you know, into my brain. <sighs> to get it solidified. See, like I read this several times and missed, there's one part I missed as we get down here to refine the figure. I missed. You have, Kelly? How'd it go? Hi, Ange. Okay, wait a few Wait a minute or two and begin to remove the paper. All right, let's say place the paper down, face down, and burnish with a damp rag, being careful not to get the medium on the, well, maybe I didn't burnish it enough. Because what will happen, right, the paper will kind of dissolve a little bit, and some of it will stick, and maybe some of it will come up. Wait a minute or two and begin to remove the paper. Leave some paper on in places. This will give you the imperfect look of torn paper. If the paper is stubborn, gently rub the surface in a circular motion with wet fingers. Sometimes work great, sometimes not. Well, if I had to have a guess, probably not. Look. I got that all bumpy, lump it and bumpy. I should get out a um, another. Uh... I'm a little nervous doing this, guys. Wondering how it's gonna turn out. Okay, so I put this one on first, I think, didn't I? So I have a damp rag. See, I'm, I see, I'm so not good with comprehension, and uh, it really takes me to and begin to remove the paper. So when they say remove the paper, am I, I'm supposed to just pick it up? I think I was supposed to burnish it with a damp rag first. Let's see, it was slipping in a sliding. So let's let's go back now my rag really is damp whoops that one was last this is why i like watching how-to videos instead of reading about it in a book <laughs> yes i'm with you gail <laughs> i knew i liked that gail <laughs> Who was I want? Oh, uh, Lisa, Lisa Conway, Lisa, my eclectic life and Diane Fago. Diane did a transfer, I think probably similar to this on a tea bag. I mean, give me a break. It looked amazing. Okay, so now. Yeah, nothing's transferring. Maybe I didn't put enough 
Maybe I didn't put enough medium. Let's see what the damp finger does. Because your, because your hands are crampy. Well, we could be here a while. Okay, Gail, she's gonna go take care of Elvin. Let's um. Let's start at the very beginning. I wonder if just a regular, not a, not an old magazine. Like I have magazine pages here. If I can sneak one out, that will be the rub. Because I'm sure the ink is different on. Okay, I don't want to lose those. Got a picture of Brussels sprouts I don't want to lose. Okay, just saying. You could always just put a water downed white paint over it. Yes, but that comes later. That comes later. I'm the reverse. I, I'm better. Oh, Kathleen's better with books. She's easily distracted watching videos. See? A little different. So not a reader. So not a reader. Okay, so I'm going to try this with this magazine. And I'm being a little more generous with my medium. And let's go here. Now burnish means to rub. So I didn't want to rub it. Like when I tried rubbing this, when I first put it down, it was slipping in a slide in. Slipping in a slide in. All right, let's try a little bit over here. A little more medium. That might be the ticket to have a little more. I'm not used to my nails being this long. And it's, I mean, I don't care if these, you know, this still will look good here. I just thought maybe if I pick up some. Well, I can peel up. Maybe it'll peel up when it gets wet. Yeah, these are damp. The um, book paper. And it's kind of, I'm peeling up maybe the top layer. I don't really feel like that's a transfer. It's just kind of. But see, it looks cool though, right? Okay, I'm going to just pick up some of this. What I don't know is if you can let this sit too long before you start to uh, wet it down and peel it up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? If this even turns out halfway well, I'll be so... So stinking. Oh, see, that little piece is coming up. That was, I want to leave that down. Oh, I think I got a little bit of a transfer right there. It's a teeny, it's a teeny tiny little piece of paper right there. That's my Rosanna Dana. Teeny tiny piece of paper. Kelly says transfers take a while to peeling it up 
You don't leave it as long. Okay, let's get at this guy. Oh, I'm getting some. Oh, baby. I got a little bit. Hi, everyone. I'm, okay, Dixie's cooking and cleaning. I think I saw you say hi. Let me pick this up. It is so cool. So cool. So now let's peel up some more of this one. Let's get that little finger in there. I'm following instructions in a book I purchased, Ange, and uh, hopefully creating a an imaginary character. So right now I'm trying to transfer the ink from a book page and a magazine page, and I'm only partially successful. And I got paper crumbles all over. Okay. Let's burnish this one. I want to get more of that one up. Circular motion. You yeah, see, so you're getting that. I'm getting that top layer of paper off. And it's leaving the print underneath. It's like so cool. So cool. See, now there I got, I don't know if you guys can tell. I got a little too much. Kelly, have you found a different uh, type of paper, like a different magazine or a certain a certain uh, type of magazine will transfer better than another uh, or magazine versus you know book pages you see I can see a little bit under here not too much of course you know you could take forever to do this and just rubbing a stamp. Cool. Oh, Kathleen's trying it with newsprint. Oh, that might come up pretty good. Let us know. Most of us get the basic idea of what it's supposed to do, not what it's actually doing. So there's what I have without, you know, really. Um, taking a lot of more time. Barbara says, question, did you say you use matte medium? Yes, she recommended matte medium. And then um, I think she says gloss at some point. Oh, this is, oh no, matte mediums for something else. This is the, um, oh, did I use this the wrong stuff? Bet you I used the wrong stuff. Fluid matte medium she uses to make glazes. And then she uses on her supply list, she's got um, regular gel medium or soft medium. Yeah, well, the gel medium will seal the paper too, right? 
We're shining. We're shining. Oh, they got all kinds of crumbles. So, well, she told us, Matt Medium, that may be why it's not working well. Well, what do I have, Matt? You mean like, like, oh, girl. Oh, I'm going to say kids because I know Raul's still here. Hold on. Hold on. See, this is where I have a problem. Thank you, Barbara. So this is what she mean. And oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hey, I got the whole page. I got me the whole page. I don't mind if I put on anything and everything on the whole page. Whole newspaper. Kelly says she always uses matte medium. Okay. Oh, goofball. Did it wrong go? Okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. We're going to regroup. I'm going to go right over top of this jazz. Well, in some plain areas. Let me get my heat gun and let's dry this up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I was getting my medium. Even though I read the word. Okay, she uses the soft gel medium on the initial stage to glue down the wallpaper and the other stuff. And um, I don't care for gloss either, but she put gloss in her instructions somewhere. I know I read it somewhere. Good question. Good question. Barbara's giving me straight on the narrow, straight on the narrow. Now I'm going to avoid those areas. Just want to get a little bit of the. Okay, so let's give it another go. Gosh, isn't this so fun? Look like a, a goofball. All right, now, I don't like to dip. I will dip my brush into my paint bottle, but I don't like to dip my brush into my matte medium. So I'm going to put a little bit in this bubble tray, I hope. I'm going to take my brush and wipe off the edge. Zip. This is going to work like a charm. Wait and see. Let's wait and see. Just wait and see. Okay, let's see if we can get this back in my, back in my tub for now. All right, let's see. This is the matte medium, not the gel. Oh, got a little, got me a little dribble. And then she says to burnish. And be careful not to get the medium on the back side of what you're trying to transfer. Yeah, well, I used the gel to put the original stuff down. The um, She used wallpaper. And I used the... Um, paper placemat. <sighs> See, it's easy to talk and do when you are familiar with what you're doing. But when you're not... Talking becomes an issue for, for, for me. <laughs> and I make sure I'm dipping my brush in the right stuff. 
And we'll see. We will see. I'm going to go right here. Thank you, Brenda. That's very kind. Cheer me up a little bit after my food paw. Okay, so now she said, leave it wait a couple, wait a couple of minutes, and then take your damp. Damp rag. I didn't set a timer. It's got to be a couple of minutes, right? Minutes aren't that long. Except when you're giving a speech. I think my rag really could be a little damper. But I will say, even though I used the wrong thing, I did get a little bit of um, transfer. With the... Uh, soft gel well it's it, this is much better see because that see how that paper oh I'm not really quite in camera see how it just it's kind of like rolling off once, once you get it uh-oh. My computer's going to start to freak out. Filter keys. Do you want filter keys? No. I pushed something. Something hit. I put stuff on my keyboard, guys. It's just, I'm a mess. Let's see. Hopefully that'll be okay. <gasps> Look, it's still slipping and sliding. And just busy making a mushroom. Make sure you don't get the medium on top of the paper. Yeah, I remember she said that part. And I don't think I have. Because then that, that'll just glue it down, right? It won't um, let me release it. Actually, I kind of like that dark spot there. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. So you can see it's getting a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And she said something about peeling it up, too. Let's just see. <gasps> Lori, look. See, like, I just, I manhandled it. Oh, I think those are probably good, Ange. I'm using large round circles, just a very light stroke with my damp cloth. It's not the softest cloth in the drawer. I kind of like the center um, and the magazine uh, colors around the outside edge. I don't know. We like it like that. So it is working.
I don't know that I would say it's working well. I don't want to go too deep because I don't want to ruin what I have under there. You know, that print that you can see under there. And when you do any project, when you follow along or you follow instructions or you're following a tutorial, there are going to be things you're going to want to do yourself because you're going to put your own ideas in it. So I'm kind of liking that. So I'm going to let this dry for just a minute or so while I look at the next step. <sighs> All right. So after that, she adds stencils. And what she does is she places a stencil on the surface and she spreads gel medium through the stencil with a flexible knife. Pick the stencil straight up to keep the pattern crisp. Do this step last so you do not smear the image and then let everything dry. And I can use my heat gun to dry it. And then we get into the scary portion. So I picked out this stencil. And this stencil and I'm thinking for this one I just want to use the tip perhaps um, a few places and then just put some of this squareness in other places so I'm going to try to avoid some of this area let me get my heat gun a little bit now, I know you can rub this more and take more off, but we're already an hour in and I've got lots left to do until, you know, mess up. <laughs> so I'm just going to, and I do, I do like the color that I've left around the edges there um, because it's going to get other layers of stuff. There's a really scary part coming up. I just, it's really scary. All right, so let's just put this in the corner. And I'm going to do a really, really thin coat because I don't want it to take too long to dry. So let's just see how it goes. Just taking my knife and... Just scraping down and trying to get a really thin coat and then picking it straight up. That's the ticket. And you're not really going to, you don't really see that yet. I think I want to put the, uh, maybe a fern down there. Grab a little more of my gel medium. And I'm using the bigger squares on the stencil. I think I would like that better. So does anyone have plans for today to watch the Super Bowl? Just curious. Yeah, if I had to pick two inch, I guess the, the postcard would also be my choice. to Super Bowl. Not fun plans. Do my taxes, meal prep, and put away laundry. Brenda, are you making the uh, what did somebody was saying they were going to be making roasted peppers. 
ground chicken or something sounded really good. All right, so I'm going to take my baby wipe and give this a clean here before that dries. Oh, Angie is about to eat mashed potatoes, meatloaf, coleslaw. Oh, that sounds yummy. My husband's worked on the taxes a little bit. All right, let's put that aside to dry. Now I want to make sure that I don't whack the areas that I just did because I want to come in and put a little bit of this. I believe this is what I want to do. This is just should just give me a little bit of a raised texture. Yes, roasted sweet. Oh, sweet potato. That's the one for. Oh, ground turkey, quinoa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Buddha bowl. Never heard of a Buddha bowl. Sounds good though. I'm sure Barbara's got some kind of slop on the stove. My hubby's making garlic, the garlic chicken wings. I think I've mentioned that before. Okay, and we have Alyssa. Kathy says, so much going on here. I'm watching while I'm eating leftover Subway. Don't be jealous. You know, I love sandwiches, but Subway has never been one of my favorites. I don't know why. We have, and I don't know if they're across the country or just in this area. We have Jersey Mike's. Oh my gosh, Jersey Mike's for me is just the bomb. Of course, I wouldn't turn away a subway. I think I'm going to dry this blocked area a little bit before I put down my fern up here. I should have done block, fern, block, but I, I wasn't thinking ahead. Get underneath it a little bit, maybe it'll dry a little bit. Yeah, see, that's tightening up already. Oh, it's a good job. It's bad. And I got a wrinkly page. Wrinkly, wrinkly page. All right, let's see if I can just get a little bit in here without messing up my. It should be dry, and I'm not pressing on it on the uh, square parts. Just down the center of this fern. Oh, that's cool. I had some paint on the back side of this, and that came through on my. I'll show you in a minute. I think that looks cool because, as you you might have been able to tell, I don't claim the stencils. I just don't do it. Okay. All right, one baby wipe down. Probably 17 more to go. So you got a little bit of extra color. We stopped at Subway because it was 
buy one, get one. My favorite Subway place is Firehouse Subs. You haven't tried the Firehouse. Tuna noodle casserole. I didn't grow up with that. And I think as a kid, I probably would not have appreciated that. But I think I would really like it now. I my One of my favorite sandwiches is the tuna melt. There's a diner in Philly, Northeast Philly. And um, they make a tuna melt. It's a rye bread that they toast. Their tuna, which I like the, we, we were able to get their recipe. Like the way they make their tuna. And then you put your tuna down, slices of tomato and Swiss cheese melt. And then you pop it in the oven and you melt it. Uh, I could eat that every day. Every day. I could eat that. Okay, so I'm going to try to dry this up. And can you all hear me fairly well with this on? Oh, Kathy, it's to dry for us. And I like Jewish rye, the, the drier, harder rye. But that's me. All right, so. She tells you to look at the surface and see if you see any shape or a form that um, is forming. And if you can't find one, she tells you to use the reference photo or use your own imagination. You can hear me? Okay, I feel like I'm talking a little louder, so I'm hope, hopefully I'm not, you know, talking too loud. She also suggests that you can use your left hand if you really want a loose, more whimsical uh, character. I'm not going to do that. Janice wants bacon, eggs, and grits. Oh, yes, that sounds good. Then she wants you to use black ink with, an, with a dropper. Draw a simple face and body shape. Consider using your long hand. Then tilt the paper to get interesting grips. The ink will follow the textured line. Let the ink dry. Now, this would be my first time to do this. I, I think probably I don't have enough texture on my page. Kathleen says, I like newsprint over gesso. Oh, oh that sounds cool. So, Kathleen, tell us. So, you put your gesso down and leave that, that stamp, and then you put your newsprint on it. And then do you do the same thing, like with a damp rag or a wet finger? Um, remove the uh, paper, the newsprint, the newsprint. Still a little sticky wicky, little sticky wicky. Kathy says, I need to try that, Kathleen. Our feet are too cold to leave a blanket. I know, right, Janice? It's going to be tricky with the eyedropper. Wait till I show you my eyedropper. Uh, it's not an eyedropper. She just says dropper. I have this kind of a dropper. Can you see that? It's nose. It's not straight. It's kind of bent. This was in my red ink. It's the only dropper I have. Now, I have the pippets. But I don't think I could control the pivot. I might do a test. A test of the emergency virtual food system. Let's do a test. Let's go do a test. Let's go do a test. 
here's an old let's move this off to the side so kathleen says put down gesso leave it for a few minutes then dampen the paper not wet peel it off girl i'm gonna be trying that mm -hmm. yes i am all right so i'm going i'm going to use i guess it does it sounds wonderful little patches of that on journal page oh baby all right let's see i'm going to see if i like oh that's a good question brenda i guess you probably could use both if you wanted that cloudy look that i love you would use your white but you're clear then you would just see the uh, newsprint right all right let's just see so that is really not that hard to do that. And that makes a very heavy line. And let's put some in the pipette. It's not much, but you know what? I can use the pipette. And then she says, let it drip. Kelly's, uh, Kathleen's using white. I think this is going to work, kids. Me thinks, me thinks it's going to work. Work, work, work. I do not really see a shape of anything. Oh, I just don't. All right, so I'm going to put my pipette and my ink lid over to the right of me because I'm right handed yeah the pipette I, I felt I really did feel more comfortable with the pipette I just have always just uh, sucked up a uh, liquid and you know pushed it hard so I wasn't sure that that was going to be my best option but i like it so i like that it's thinner so now it's when she says to go ahead and make your shape so i think i'm going to i'm going to mimic her shape and her yeah i like the thinner one too uh janice sees a tree a rat or a squirrel none of which i think i want in, in my journal <laughs> just saying tree might not be bad i really kind of have my heart set on this little this little gal so i think i'm going to try to mimic her i wish i had something that i could i used to, when i worked i used to have this big metal thing that I could sit my steno pad on. I wish I had, I wish I had that. So gosh, now my screen is there. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try that. Now she's got a long, narrow body. Her head's a little big. If I start up here, well, if I start with the eyes, I'm not really going to do that thin. See, when she does, when she shows you over here, she really is just doing a very light outline. And then she's going to come back in and, um, you know, fuss around with those other parts. So, and her eyes, as you have noticed, I'm sure, are very wide set. So, Lori's very, Lori's very anal, very anal. So I'm going to make myself a couple little marks. Shh, don't tell anybody. Don't, don't tell. Look, I just put a mark right there. So I think I want to. Have a little mark that I can barely see there and a little mark 
here. And I think I want a little nose here. And then her mouth can come down this way. We're going to go from there. And G. Marie, don't be telling on me. Janice also sees two birds. Oh, I would like to see the two birds. I think they might be a cute addition. Okay, so I'm going to do the nose first. Oop, big old fat nose. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. I'm going to come around this way and around this way. Oh, it's starting to bleed itself. Isn't that cool? I'm going to give her a little neck and then I'm going to give her this, this crazy little hat. I like the crazy little hat. Oh. I'm not looking at chat. My eyes aren't set apart as far as hers. So then she's got little shoulders that kind of come down this way. She really just comes straight down. Oh, I got a blob in my, you know, if I don't load the ink up as much, that might be the ticket. Don't, don't uh, load the, um, the pipette as much. I'm going to take it right down to the bottom. And we're going to give her a little bit of a neck. She's bleeding out. She's bleeding out. Where, <laughs> where I have, <laughs> where I put that newspaper. Oh my gosh. It looks like she's growing a beard. It's not good. It's not good at all. All right, let's give her little arms. Now she gives her a little bit of a butt, but I don't know that I can really kind of do that. Uh, oh, she makes her arms come away from her body. Well, this is try number one. Believe me, I'm going to be trying this again. Oh, you're a braver person than I am, Lori. <laughs> oh, that's just character. Yes, you have to wait now. You have to wait. There's more to come. There's more to come. All right, now she said, now my ink is probably pretty dry. She said to tip it. You won't be able to see me tip it. I think she said you can spritz it with water to make it drip more.
yeah this is starting to look more like a halloween thing all righty all right then you're supposed to let your ink dry Follow the steps in the acrylic ink drawing exercise to refine your character. To maintain a loose, expressive piece, work with what you have without trying to modify the ink lines too much. Use pencils, paint pens, ink, or paint to add details. Now, well, page 109... She tells you to collage everything down. Uh, thin water, you watercolor paint with thin the watercolor paint with water. Scrape a flat brush loaded with the thinned paint. See when I read, a, read the other part, she's using acrylic paint in the one that we're following along. See, look, she's got big thick lines on that kid. Gosh, I wish I put my eyes out wider. You sketch the figure, tilt the paper, let the ink drip. The drips will add unusual lines to your figure. No kidding. <laughs> I think my paper could have been drier. That might have been part of the part of the issue. She, she looks like a kitten girl. Mm -hmm. Blot the wettest spots with a paper towel and let it dry. Add some white or black pencil to establish the eyes. Depending on the background, you can use black pencil colored pencil to reshape any features if you're unsure of where you want the lines to go use a black watercolor pencil the lines can be erased with a damp rag the extra drip lines can lead to more interesting shapes or can be eliminated or altered with paint i use them in this example to embellish wings see so she had some some stuff going on and she put wings on her girl there use white heavy body acrylic paint to cover up any unwanted lines try to leave as much of the ink as possible and define your shape with more black ink or pencil use washes or more watercolor to add depth add highlights with white acrylic paint Use paint pens and other markers, mark make, marking, mark making tools to add final touches. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, dear friend, if we might do a little surgical procedure. Because I have, okay, what am I missing? And Lori, she is really cool looking. <laughs> you think? I'm wondering if I can take her eyes out and redo. <gasps> Look. I should have been in makeup. Oh, little girl. Well, now this won't because this was too wet. I gotta be in makeup. All right. So now I don't want to destroy. The, I mean, I think the basic shape is not too bad. Up here is not going to be much better. But let me give this a quick dry, a quick dry. Kelly likes her. Kelly likes her. Thank you, lady. I don't want to lose the shape of her head. I kind of think she's the best. And even once it dries, I guess if I really wipe at it, I can get it up. Okay, man, she's ready for an nap, but she's hanging in. Thank you, man.
redo. Okay, now I'm not going to do this a third time. Whatever I get with this time. Brenda says she wants to make a kitten girl now. Look for her on my IG after I do my taxes. Okay, kid, we will. I think I want to redo this line. All right, so we had a little nose here, but I want to come way over here with our eyes. What did Kelly say? She looks like me. Well, she did. <laughs> I do have eyes. <laughs> okay. Okay, one eye's bigger than the other eye. One eye's bigger than the other eye. Let's give her a little mouth here. It's okay. It's all right. I'm going to make her ears bigger up above that black blob. Wish I could find the birds. I don't see the birds. Tuppins a bag, tuppins, tuppins, tuppins a bag. Feed the birds. <laughs> this looks like a little something over here growing out the side of her. Let's do that. I wish I'd brought her arms out. But see, this is, I don't think I can get this out because that's where the paper is and it was too wet and... I didn't really have the medium over it. It did not. All right. So let me dry this. It says, she says they'll really let it dry. I like her face much better with her eyes set further apart. Ooh. Now she got a big old boo-boo on her eyeball. See, I just can't leave well enough alone. Yeah, that butterfly has seen better days. Her eyes just keeps getting bigger and bigger. All right, it says the blot. Oh, worry, it's just not. I'm just not. I, it's a lot of ink to dry, but you know what? I got the heat gun, so why don't I just leave it alone? Goodness me. Okay, Ange is out. All right, Ange. See you later. You know what I got? You know what I got? Do, 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 do. You know what I got? Cut me a Q-tip. Not really. Cotton. Cotton swab. See, I said I wasn't going to do this again. And here I am. I'm a fussing. I think you'd get better. I don't think I'm getting better. I think I'm getting worse. I think the first time was the charm. Look, I wiped out her nose. I didn't even know it in her mouth. 
Oh, dear goodness. Good grief. Good grief, Charlie Brown. Okay, here we go. We're drawing. We're drawing. We're drawing. I think you have some uh, color pencils, the black and the white. And she said to use those to redefine the line. Hi, Hedler. Welcome, welcome to the crazy world of whimsy. Okay, so now she said to use your white paint to adjust how your creation looks. So let me grab uh, let me grab this brush and I'm just going to paint some stuff in and see where it goes. Let's see. Uh, what are you doing? There will only be. Oh, no, they don't. No, they only do fish and veggies. But I don't know who else is coming. You have to call me out. So are there other people coming? I don't know, honey. I don't know. Uh, Nick's parents were down for his birthday yesterday. If they're hanging around, they might be there. He's trying to decide how many chicken wings we're going to need. Sorry for that brief commercial. I sang that song on stage when I was 10. Feed the birds. You did. Aw. Okay, so of course this is turning gray. I don't really want her gray. Should just leave the baby wipes out. You think she's appearing? I want her cheeks to be, yeah, boy, Dee Dee's right. You put that golden matte medium and that gel stuff down and you can get that stuff uh, to come up really easy. Okay, let's get, let's try to get her chin back in. She looks like she's pulling her mask down. filling in her neck I was going to do a practice and then I didn't this is a heavier white paint she recommends what she put in her instructions was heavy bodied white paint and black now once I if I let that dry I might be able to get another coat on that I wish I had somebody here that could read ahead. Yeah, I'm using the basic. But that's really, that's thick. That's thicker. I'm wondering how the pencil, now I've got two kinds of pencils. I've got my Prisma pencil in black, and I've got one of those, and I don't know how to say this. Oh, Raul, you're going to make me blush. This is one of those uh, Progresso Cohen, Cohen Noor. I don't know how to say that one, that name. 
you think but see it's it's kind of getting gray i don't know if this my personal might be the better Woo! broke a point do 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 yeah those pencils not working real good on this Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. simply because all right i'm going to put more white on but i want to read ahead a little bit where she says um to add color see she puts a little yeah see that's all not working for me uh, maybe I should just, uh, you know, I'm just usually better with paint. So I might do that in one second. Uh, let's see. Add color. Mix glazes using ink mixed with matte medium. Paint the glaze randomly over the area you want to unify and blend the edges with a damp rag. Let each layer dry and apply a second color for added depth. You want to build up the layers, continue to build the layers of color, adding texture and visual interest with where you apply the glaze. Drip ink around the collar and spray with water to help it spread. I do have a Stabilo all. I was going to use that, but I think I might use my black acrylic paint. Um, and I want to see how. Oh my gosh, I have such little strength in my old thumbs. Now, if I can get my, well, this might work. If I can locate my liner pencil, I would be a very happy lady. Very happy. Very happy. Ooh. Da -da 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 -da. All right, let's try a little more white up in here. Yeah, that's going to go. I said, I don't want to be too. Um, I don't want to be too uh, structured, you know. I'm trying to not have it look perfect to some to some degree. Like I want it to look like a little person, but see, I'm not getting that ink is blending in with that heavy body, so it's probably not as heavy body as it should be. All right, I'm going to get my liner. I'm going to grab some of my black paint. And I'm going to shore up some of these, some of these lines here. And she does a little thing here. And then she's coming back in and she puts a little thing here. It should not look perfect. It's kind of an abstract. Yeah, yeah. Went out to the kitchen for a bit. I must say, Lori, I like yours better than hers. Oh, my gosh. You you guys are so sweet to me. Thank you. I think you're a little crazy, but I thank you. Okay, so I'm just kind of mimicking what she's done. So I don't have to think about this part of it because we're a long way from we're a long way from home, kids. Woo, long way. Okay, so let's try to give her little eyes here. Some kind of definition. This poor little pupil over here, really. I can't get that. Uh, boy, I wish I could see my white. Man, well, that feels pretty dry, but my white is really not covering. Now, when I looked up um, what I could change for the matte medium and said something about making a glaze with your acrylic paint, I found this in my stash, glaze base. 
Transform any acrylic paint, paint color into a faux finish. So that's what I was thinking I would use. Um, you know, to put the color in her dress and give her little rosy cheeks and whatnot. Now I'm wondering if I use my regular white paint, if that's going to be any better than that basics, because that, quite frankly, quite frankly, Scarlett is not doing what I wanted to do. So let, well, maybe I'm dipping in the wrong part of the. Yeah, I'm dipping back into where I have the gray. I'm putting this is this one kind of thick. And maybe if I let's just let's just do a little bit on our chinny chin chin. All right. So now Let's get a little, uh, this is a coral, coral shell. I'm just going to put a little drip. Hey, Tommy Joe. Nice to see you. Good afternoon. I'm using up all my little um, pots here. I'm just going to put a little drip of that in my little bubble tray. And I'm going to add, try a little bit of this glaze and see if I can get kind of a flesh color. I'm assuming I need a good portion of that. I'm going to use the uh, other end of my Now I want, want it to be really transparent. That's they they she said you can add water. So let's squirt a little water in there. Just squirters and not the evaporate thing for me. Pretty translucent. All right, so I'm going to start, methinks. Let's, a little, let's dry a little bit more. Yeah, I am. I really would like to get this a little whiter. It's just not, just not whitening up. A little bit, not much. That would take a lot of layers, methinks. Okay. Now. All right, I'm going to take my... Black, put... Um, Just still mimicking uh, Karen O'Brien. And then she, I didn't flip my book page open. Now she's got her little arms going all the way up. I'm giving her a little, we're going to give her a little more of a shape here. And then she's got little circles for buttons. Let's 
see if I can not put my fingers in those. Wouldn't that be nice if I don't put my fingers in? All right, let's see what this flesh looks like. Let's start with right under her eyes a little bit. Give her some color. I'm going to add some red to this. But see, I'm confused where she uses ink and where she uses paint. If I'm quite honest with you. Now, it says about mixing that medium in the paint. So let's try that. I'm going to mix that in with some of this yellow. A little bit more. And then, of course, I can spritz this with water. Oh, thanks, Tommy Joe. I love this lady's book. I don't know if she has other books. Let's add some color in here. Let's get some other color going. Oh, just keep picking up that black. So if you if you try this if you try this at home, make sure you let your layers dry. Would be my one. Um, I'm really kind of rushing it. So make sure your layers dry. See, I can still see where I have wet paint here. She looks better on the computer screen than she. <laughs> Janet, do you still see the? Or is Janet? If you're still here, do you still see the bird? Like, where's the bird? I would love to put a little bird in here. I want to give her a little shape on her little, her little tatas there. Give her a little something going on here, huh? A little something on her tatas. And then she takes ink and puts a little bit of ink and then drips it down her dress to give it more interest. Not really. <laughs> it was probably in the center. Let's put a little bit of this in her wings. And then I'm going to go into this flesh and see if I can just put a little bit of Gosh, I'm just really not getting that. I guess probably because it's water-based. Duh. Hi, Candy. Um, it's reactivating. Even if the ink does start to dry, it's reactivating. Oh, a nice, clean, kind of fleshy color. Wipe your nose, dear. Wipe your nose, dear heart. All right, so let's dry your cheek. Put some of this flesh down here. She really looks quite gray. All right, let's add a little bright red. Oh, thank you, Candy. I'll show you the, the little um, character I'm trying to recreate. This little gal. She's got a little bit of yellow above her eyes. Really, and I can, you know, after the fact, I'll probably come in and play with this some more. But let's, um, let's see if I can get a little, a 
more of a pinky red cheek color. I'm really mixing the red to her right, almost even with her head, like right here. I'm trying to look in the screen, thinking I might be able to see it. Hmm. You could make one of those round birds to the left of your girl where the faded print is a fat bird. Hmm. That's the texture I see, I think. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I look into the computer screen. It almost looks like this looks like a big tail coming down here to me. I just, this black is driving me nuts. In some ways, I think it almost would be better if, um, the ink was permanent, if you used a permanent ink. Can you spray it and then continue? You mean with water? Candy? I did spray it with some water and then it runs. Or do you mean with a sealant, with a fixative? Yeah, I don't know where my, my fixative is here somewhere, but probably. But I think some of the idea is to just, you know, let it have its way, which is hard for me. Um, I certainly like the look of this kind of a project, but it's hard for me to not have more control. I want to get in those eyeballs. Let's see. She put some yellow around. She sticks with this, the three, like three main colors. Okay, oh, Kelly, thanks for joining in. Enjoy your time with your daughter. Now I'm going to let that yellow on her eyes sit a minute. Hey, Devin. <laughs> Hi, Devin. I'm a struggling. <laughs> um, so let's get the back. Let's get the other side of her neck back in here. Kind of. The trick is not to try to control it. 
Yeah, see, that is so hard for me. Gail's out of here, too. Bye, Gail. Now that line won't erase. Uh, let's see if I can get some more of this little flesh glaze in here. Yeah, as soon as I hit that, and that's what it's supposed to do. As soon as I hit that ink, it's supposed to, um, you know, it's not permanent. Now, maybe it wouldn't run as much if you really let it dry. I want to put some red drips on her dress. See how she has. You know, these lines. I want to see how that looks. And um, I probably might fuss around a little bit more. What about doing a wing on the other side? Yeah, that's a thought, isn't it? That's an excellent thought. Let's give that a go. Okay. Try to kind of mimic the other side. All right, let's try a little. I would like the space to be wider. And I'm going to use this Ecoline acrylic ink. And I'm going to try to be very gingerly with my application. Seems like she puts a little bit of ink. Oop, that's not a little. And then let's it drip. Let's see if I can get it to drip. Some of it's dripping. Not all of it. Let's try. Let's try a little bit of water. My water is not clean. I'm shaking her every which away. I think sometimes uh, the gal by the name of uh, was it Kieran Tamir? She kind of helps helps her drippage. <laughs> I will pack my bookmarks, but have to wait till Wednesday to mail. Okay, I think they're talking to Devin. Devin had a great event yesterday. She hit her 6,000 subby mark, and we're very proud of her. All right, let's see. All right. Kathleen said, I drew her with Elegant Writer, which is a runny ink, but if you let dry, it won't run. This way you get the best of both worlds. So oh, thank you, Devin. I got to write that down, Kathleen. One moment, please. I don't know if I've, what you call it? Elegant Writer. I think I have heard of that. E L E G A N T writer. I'll bet you I have it somewhere. Let 
going to have to look. I'm going to have to look at my stash. All right. I think I want to spritz maybe a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got the spritz going. I would like to find a nice spritzer. Well, this comes out like a blast. And I have one of the Timmy ones, but boy, that, that seized up on me. I didn't get much use out of that Timmy one. I'll tell you that. All right. I don't want her to look like she's got a mustache. But all right. After this, I'm going to put a little bit of white in her eyes to see if I can... Um, get that to her eyes to maybe look a little better. Karen O'Brien is the author of this book I'm looking at. And she looked like she had some yellow and then some red in her eyes. You love the elegant writer pens. I'm assuming they come in all different. You know, I'm going to look it up online. I probably would do better with that. If I get a look at it, then I might know if I have one. You know what I mean? I'm going to water down a little bit of this white paint. Some of the sprays like Febreze and such come in a Mr. Bottle big, but very good for misting. Hmm. Okay, Devin, thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it. Have a great day. All right, let's put a little white in her face. Still trying to get this chin area not to look so dark. And then I want to get a little bit of yellow over in this wingy. Let's put a little bit of that peach in here. A little bit in here. I did get out some yellow inks. Thanks, Devin. <laughs> Her eyes are looking very gloomy. Kelly has a set of four or five black, red, blue, green. Oh, okay. I'm going to be looking that up. And I might be shopping. Okay. Now, she has her hat red with some orange. I'm going to try some of the I don't want it to look like a prime thing, you know? Let's see what the orange looks like on the bird. This is where an accident's about ready to happen. I got everything, every jar open on my desk. Trying to stay a little bit away from that. Lori, are you and family having a soup? My sister Nancy is hosting some of us for uh, today's game. So we've got to take a run over to Pennsylvania. My younger sister is going to a friend's house. She had plans before uh, we had decided to, to get together. So my son and my nephew... My niece and her husband, 
We're all supposed to be at Nancy's. So it should be fun. We're kind of, because the game's late, so we're kind of doing snacks. We're going to have some uh, Jezebel and some taco dip. And, um, oh, that looks kind of cool. That looks kind of cool, huh? That looks better. This kind of really kind of reminds me, I think I have a hair on my brush, of, um, there it is. Kind of like um, Tamara Laporte kind of style, but more out of control. Well, she probably has some out of control stuff too. Jezebel is you take, um, I don't know the um, amounts. If you're interested, I can find it for you and get it to you. Um, you take, I think it's apricot, apricot and perhaps a pineapple jelly jam, which I think the pineapple is a little hard to find. And uh, I think really strawberry would work too. And then you mix in that horseradish and I think there's some pepper. And then you get a block of cream cheese and then you pour your jelly um, creation on top and then serve Triscuits. Or you could use any kind of cracker you like. We like the Triscuits. And it's um, sweet and spicy. taste. I just absolutely love it. Yeah, it is good. Happy Maker. That's Carol, isn't it? Go Eagles. Go, go, go. Sorry, Kathy Kalikoki. Shannon's daughter, Sarah, and I were duking it out yesterday at Shannon's. She's a diehard. She, they're in Canada. So I just, you know, I didn't think she'd have a favorite U.S. football team. I thought maybe in <laughs> Go Chiefs. All right, Kath. <laughs> um, didn't think she'd have a favorite U.S. football team, so I thought maybe she was just watching because it's the Super Bowl. Well, here she's a diehard Chiefs fan. <laughs> she's even got a, what's his name, Patrick Mahone? Is that how you say it? She's even got a shirt, a Patrick Mahone shirt. It should be a very exciting evening, to say the least, huh? All right, I'm trying to put a little more yellow in the eye. Well, my neighbor, my 93-year-old neighbor, Betty, she's an Eagles fan, but she loves Andy Reid, and she, she, she watches mostly all the football games. And she's always talking about the Chiefs. You know, she wants the Eagles to win, but she's, so she's rooting for the Chiefs. She uh, really, really likes Andy Reid. He's a good guy. He's a good, good guy. He did, he did a good job for Philly when he was here. All right, I'm adding some more black ink. To this swing and hoping maybe I can get some of this to drip down. All right, I'm going to check the instructions and see what she says next. Eh, everyone loves Andy. Yeah, he's a good coach for sure. Oh yeah, I like that drippage on that on that wing. Yeah, let's let's give that a whoa. 
See, my spritzer is just terrible. It's looking bad. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Her eyes look a little ominous. I, I just don't know. I can't seem to get enough color in there because my ink won't dry. I'm pretty sure she said to use acrylic. All right. So you're supposed to add layers and just keep uh, building up your colors. I mean, you can't even see her arms anymore. Uh, let's see. Bring out the background. Paint out the background with white paint. This will push the figure forward in the painting. Mix a glaze by adding a few drops of blank ink, black ink into a pool of matte medium. Paint over the background, letting the glaze settle in the textured areas. Gently wipe back the background with a damp rag, removing the glaze until you like the look. Once it's dry, use a stiff white brush to lightly apply white paint to the raised areas. So let's do that. A little sad. A little wispy. I think her eyes look sweet. I can't think you can really see her eyes. I'd like to get a little more. Um, well, I'd like to get a little more red in that hat too. My, my favorite red ink is across the way on the table behind me. I stole the dropper from that and I wanted to put it out of the way so I didn't knock it over. I'm thinking she needs some stuff at the top of her top of her little hat. Some little squigglies or something. All right, so this is what I was thinking about the book that I showed earlier that I put together um, with my painting paper pages and the um, binding. I don't know what she called it, Nuit Arts Binding. Um, can't think of the word. Her binding process or gosh, what's the word I want? I'm thinking, look, I picked up a piece of, <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, I was wondering how difficult it would be to find different ephemera that I could print, print. And make that like a uh, like a show tune movie kind of a art journal. Do like a collage journal. There's so many pages though. That might be hard to do. All right, so I'm going to take this white that I have left over. I'm going to find myself another brush. Let's see if this one works. I'm do, going to do a combo. I got brush hairs everywhere. Out of control. All right, so she says to take your background. This is going to take forever. Let's use the... Um, large brush that I had originally for my mediums. I'm going to paint this entire surface and try to get around my figure. For some reason, I'm not seeing people do the Virgin Lights is the best. Oh, Virgin Lights is fabulous. I like the, um, the, what do you call it? The number nine. I like the number. Candy, <laughs> I like the number nine. No sprouts. <laughs> it's got turkey and I think goat cheese. And, and it's 
got the uh, oil and vinegar. I'm going right over that bird. You like the number two? Oh my gosh, I haven't had Jersey Mike's in a while. It's a little distance from our, our from our home, the one we go would go to, and I'm just not over that way too much anymore. Not usually when it's hey Kimberly, who oh, love her. Thank you. <laughs> You're very sweet. Okay, so I'm trying to get some white. So you can see that. Well, you maybe you can't. Can you really see that um, placemat? That doily type placemat. You can kind of see that. I am going to work on her face a little bit more. Not today. I mean, I don't have time today. You folks are almost here. Three hours. So I'm covering up all my painting over all my texture that we put down. Now I'm sure you could use gesso. She says to use white paint. So first time through, I'm just going to try to follow the instructions as best as I can. Oh, you did? Okay, Kimberly's got the book order, and it's going to be to her on Tuesday. How fun. Oh, Kimberly, the other stuff in the book is, like, so cool. So cool. Okay. Now, I'm going to want to dry this up. Let's see if I can get a little bit more white in here by her neck. She does definitely look better. Yes, the book is very inspiring. Um, and it's like stuff really you can do because it doesn't, you know, it, it can be you. It doesn't have to be like hers, right? So I'm going to try this with the heat gun. And then she says, to mix some black ink, I think she says. Oh, no, wait a minute. Mix a glaze by adding a few drops of black ink into the into a pool of matte medium. Oh, I got a big pool of matte medium still here. I might scoop some of that out. All right, let's dry her up. I love the yellow on her face. And this almost looks a little blue down here. Um, oh, I'll show you candy. I can dry and show you the book at the same time. Imaginary characters. Mixed media painting techniques for figures and faces. And it's by Karen O'Brien. I gave an IBM number. No, I said that wrong. ISBN number. Earlier. There's two on the back of the book. I don't know why. She says on the back, embrace your curiosity and see what happens. On your journey, you'll discover five methods to uncover your unique creative voice. Thank you, Kimberly. A magical drawing method, imaginative warm-up exercises, more than 30 exciting mixed media projects, and you'll learn to paint without a plan. How big can that be? All right, so now I'm going to take a little scoop of dupa, a little scoop of dupa. This is mixed media here, uh, called matte medium. 
that's where I got confused. Let's get that little crumb out, whatever that was from. And I'm going to put this in here. I should have just left it in there. I wasn't, I was thinking there was a little more in there than actually were. See, I just have to keep reading it over and over because I struggle. Okay, let's see. Mix paint over the background, letting the glaze, oh, it says to paint it over and let the glaze settle. And then I'm going to take my rag, my damp rag. Candy just wandered it on Kindle. Yeah, I mean, you. I'll do a quick flip through again when I'm when I'm ready to to get going here. But let me cap up my red ink. My red ink, I think. And where's my yeller? Yeller. I got a yellow lid somewhere. Oh no, this is orange. I see it. All right, so now I'm going to take my black ink and I'm going to put a few drops. Eh, one's probably enough, really. I'm easy to enable, especially because I always look for things to do with my classes. Well, you have a good reason. I'm easily uh, enabled for no reason. No reason at all. Yeah, I'm going to need more than this, I think. I should have just done it over there. See, I put my matte medium away. But they said to do a glaze, you can put water in it. So I'm going to add some water to this. because I want it glazy, I want it juicy, because I want it to run into the cracks of my texture that I put down. And I can mix up more. Right? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, loop de Now, this is where we should see all the, um, where I put the doily placemat on and the soft gel medium through the stencil. We should see some of that start to pop up. And then she says it pushes this back. Oh, thanks, Kimberly. And I just don't have quite enough. I'm adding a little bit of water. Now she wants you to take your damp rag and come over your surface. Leave what's in the crevices. Right? Need a little more room here. I think it could be a little darker. So I'm going to come back with my ink. I was afraid of it being too dark. I'm going to really shock it. I'm going to shock it. This is really black. But hey, this is what we're experimenting to see how it's going to look. I'm going to add some more water.
right over the bird. Right over the bird. You want it juicy enough to get down in those little grooves. Now, I went light on the, um, when I did the stenciling, because I wanted it to dry. But uh, I would think you could use the texture paste for sure, you know, and um, really put it in there. And she used a textured wallpaper. Um, I was trying to think if I had any um, scrapbook paper that had a texture, but I couldn't, other than um, like glitter, I, I, I couldn't come up with one that I, I had in my stash. She's looking a bit ominous. I think I might rather use my a baby wipe too. So let's just see. If I can, I want to use a light touch because I just want to hit the surface. It's still coming out. So my, my texture is not too deep. See, this should all be smooth over here and be wiping fairly clean. Get down in here with some. And then I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to do what I would call dry brush technique but that's an old um that's an old ceramic term and you could pick out any colors right that you were wanting to do if you had a certain page in your journal or something you could just you don't have to do the the blacks you could do any color really let's get this my, my little fern. My fern down here is in her dress, so that didn't really, sh that doesn't really show up too much. All right, let's dry it up and let's dry brush some white. So you're going to need, um, or want to use a stiff brush. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Like one of those white sisters of those. And then she comes back in and she uses color pencil. She uses, uh, looks like a pasta pen or any kind of a paint marker to come in and do some additional detail work that you might like to do. Now, the next one I try, I would try it and probably use texture paste, maybe, so I get more of, um, more of a raised effect. But that's just me. And I, I'm going to check out those, um, those things that uh, Kathleen mentioned, because I think, I, ha I think I probably have them. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to, I'll work on her eyes too. And then I'll paste this on um, Instagram. I like how the smooth, the uh, book print is showing through her little face there. I like how, I don't know if you guys can tell, she's got just a little, a little patch of book print there all right so now i need more white paint i'm going to go with my now she doesn't say this but this is what um 
Yeah, I don't I don't know if they um really watch my channel, but it, it does look like something they would enjoy having a go at it. Having a go. Um she Karen uh, O'Brien doesn't say this, but in my ceramic days, what I would do with the dry brushing is either use a piece of paper tailing or a paper bag, like a brown paper bag, and uh, put my brush in the color that I wanted to dry brush and take a lot of it off and then and then dry brush to try to, and then you just build up. Now, Karen doesn't say to do that. And you probably with this, you do want a little heavier, be a little heavier handed. But this should start to make some of that underneath texture pop. You can, can you see a little bit or not, not too much? And then again, this is, uh, takes time and layers. I'm kind of rushing it here. I don't know why. I mean, I do have plenty of time. The game's not till 6.30. Boy, I'm always really stingy with the paint today. Now, once that dries, I can come back and put on another layer. She might look cute with a little bit of, hey, Mitzi. Hello, hello. And then like with a Posca pen, she, she says something about adding highlights and whatnot. I don't know. Can you tell? Does this look like anything is happening? Can you even tell on the screen? Yeah, see, I think I'm getting too much there. Just light strokes over top. You're just trying to catch that top surface. I don't think I missed anybody okay. Now I'm going to try this a little bit, just a little bit. And there's white and then there's white. Somewhere I have a type. I don't know, this is kind of old. You can see it coming through. It's kind of off She looks like she's saying, oh, darling, what's for lunch? I think, too, I could make these wings bigger. I think the wings maybe could be exaggerated. Let's see if I can get any of this. This stuff's really old and dry. Let's see if I can. See, she might look good. Like, you know how... Um, Dee Dee will do the uh, with the baby wipe, make like a mist. She might look good with some of that on her. So, what have I learned? First, I have learned it's not as easy as it looked or sounded when I read the directions. I have learned that this was may not have been the best project to do live because you need time for your layers to dry in between. And while I have the heat gun, um, I, I certainly rushed it, right? I learned that 
I can use a pipette to draw lines and have really have some kind of control, actually more control than I realized. So that's cool. You know, for those of us who now she's starting to pop a little. Okay. For those of us who watch the Mary Atelier, um, she, now I've just lost my train of thought when I looked at that message about her popping. Oh, it'll come back to me. Um, I would use more of more soft gel medium or texture paste to make my texture pop more you have more depth so that when you put on the dark glaze at the end uh, it would pop better and your white dry brushing on top um, would have more of an effect I also learned that I don't think I had nearly enough a tissue paper or um, textured papers on the first layer. I kind of had it scattered around and I think other than the face area I could have a lot more. Gosh, what was I going to say about Mary? Something Mary does. So I will adjust that for the next one I try, or the next project I do from this book, for sure. Um, a couple other things I was thinking I should have done differently. Oh, the um, putting the newsprint down and trying to get a transfer. You want to use the uh, like golden matte medium, not so much the gel. Now the gel worked a little bit, but the medium was a lot better. And um, Kathleen, she was here earlier and she said she likes gesso. Let it dry just a little bit and then she uses newsprint. And she gets a nice, nice image, nice transfer. So that's something I would like to try as well. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Using the pipit and doing the ink, the image with the ink, uh, Mary uses those fine tip, uh, what does she call it? Like a fine tip applicator that she puts her paint in. You know, one of those would I think work really well, which wouldn't, I, I mean, what do you guys think? I think it would work really well um, for this. I'm so, I'm so dying. Fine liner. Yeah, yeah, there you go, Kimberly. You got it. Yeah, like a fine liner. Now, of course, like I said, you can come back in here. She does with the uh, Oh, good. Thank you. Um, Kathleen, I don't know if I know you on, are you Kathleen Kelly? And I, I don't know, I'm not even going to try to say your last name. Uh, is that how you are on IG so we can find you? I think we might be, um, follow each other. All right, so I'm going to put her aside. And I think I am going to work on her a little bit more. But let's just, um, I'm going to just show the book one more time so Candy can see that she's made a good, hey, there's Julie. Good morning, Julie. All right, let me just cap up a couple of things here. Yes, okay. Yeah, I thought we followed each other. Just wanted to double check because I don't want to miss it. I bet you your girl looks great. All right. Or, or your character, I should say. Maybe it's not a girl. Maybe it's not a little ghoul. All right, let's see. Lori tends to put her, see? As I'm trying to cover up a, a puddle of paint. You're tired today? 
You're just getting up, aren't you? Sure. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right, let's see. Maybe the paper towel. I can get some of this off. So again, this is an imag imaginary characters, mixed media painting techniques for figures and faces by Karen O'Brien. You look at that sweet little, and is my camera okay where you can see? Look at that sweet little thing. She's got wings on her feet. So chapter one, she's got fantastical worlds of collage, creating enchanting realms and characters. Chapter two is drawn from your imagination. Approaches to discover your unique drawing style. Julie said she woke up early and couldn't sleep and was, oh, don't you hate that when that happens? Chapter three, mystifying pictures, characters rising from ink and paint. Chapter four, happy endings and beginnings, continuing the creative quest. I mean, really. Hey, Inch. Did you have your nap? Look, you can't see. Look at the top of the top of her head. See, you can see that newsprint coming through, like with mine. If I had just put the newsprint there, I would have liked it better, I think. I mean, they're just sweet little images. She had a nap. And you don't have to do all the, the whole collage thing either, right? You can just sketch these in your book. In a sketchbook. You don't really need to, you know, and then come to your art journal and put your little creatures in this is the one that Gail said she liked with the pup and she gave him like a little boy's body she put the puppy puppy image I don't know if that's a transfer I haven't read the whole book but see she goes through step by step Gives you all kinds of uh, instructions. Oh, here she's using a, uh, looks like a foamy stamp. She's using paper collage to make creatures. My whole family's taking Angie naps. They're addictive. Mini art blocks using tape transfers. Have you ever done that? I've done that. They're cool. I don't remember how I did it, but I know I did it. Here she's working on a block of wood. You could do this with a grandbaby's picture. see I'm up too high you posted it okay let me see where's my phone do you mind if I show it if you posted it I'm gonna assume you don't mind Kelly I mean I keep calling you Kelly you're Kathleen I know who you are okay where's my Oh, these these people on this IG that throw the paint up against the wall and they do all kinds of stuff to it and then that you back away and it's like oh an actual image unbelievable 
Okay, K A T H L E E and Kathleen Gilly. K E L L, you're just a Y. If I can. I think that be you. Aww. She's sweet. Can you guys see? Oh, you put flowers in her hair. Look how sweet. Oh my gosh, she turned out great. <laughs> I love her. Aww. That's great. Thanks, Kathleen. I'm glad you were able to do that so we could all see it together. Look at this one. See, now this one, she's almost like she has a tattoo there. I guess that's a stamp. All right? Love it. Just love it. Look. Look, there's your postcard, Ange. I'm guessing that might be a transfer. I don't know. I'm going to have to read more of the book. But I just kind of pick out something to do and then have at it. See, like, look at this one with the big forehead. But it's still cute. I would like to have more control around the eyes, I have to say. Because I am an eye, eye person. I love drawing eyes and stuff. Look at all those. Fairy chain. Well, I think it's about time for me. I need to have a little something to eat. And then i got to do a few things before we head over to Pennsylvania. Thanks for coming in and spending your Sunday morning, early afternoon with me. I appreciate it. I just got to see, you know. Oh, thanks, Julie. I um I just want to I just want to do more of this stuff too. I have to work at this stuff, you know, it doesn't come natural. Look at him. Using masks and stencils. I'm not sure I understand a mask. I'm going to have to. I do love green. Look at that green and orange. Oh, that doesn't. That's fine. That's fine, Ange. Woohoo! Go Eagles. Yeah, I just hope it's um, a good game. That they play well. Both teams play well and uh, that no one gets injured. So that's the gal we were working with today. Urban folk. She developed some urban folk. All right, kids. So I'm planning to be on tomorrow evening as usual around 530. Not quite sure what direction I will be going. But I'll come up with something. Something, something. So I hope to see you all soon. Have a great rest of only their egos. <laughs> great rest of your Sunday afternoon. And um, we have, I will, Mary will be on later this evening, I am sure. And um, I don't know if anybody else is popping on this afternoon or not. I think Tanya has been posting some stuff. But I don't know that she'll be on what time. I don't even, I can't even see my. She'd be coming on about now if she were coming on. So she may be. You never know. You never know, kids. All right. So listen, have a great afternoon. If you're watching the game, enjoy it. Thumbs up from Eagles. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend. And I will see you. Oh, Xander. See, why? 
Why can I not remember Sandra? I've gotten myself to remember a peachy Jamie every third Thursday, but Sandra at four. Yes. And then, oh, there's a hopathon that's jumping from different people's rooms. Oh. Cat says later, everyone, go Chiefs. All right, so you've got a hop going on. You might be able to find out about that. We've got Sandra at four. And Murray, I guess she comes on around six or seven on Sunday evenings. All right, gang, that's it for me. I'm going to head out. And don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. And I will see you soon. Thank you, mods. Bye-bye.